Obesity is costing our modern world far more than many of us realize, and we're all paying for everyone's expanding waistlines. McKinsey Global Institute has done the number crunching on obesity, saying it's a $2 trillion problem, costing as much as combating tobacco and alcohol abuse, and even war, terrorism and gun violence. Fat is becoming the new normal. Where once obese people stood out in the crowd, now they slip past, attracting barely a glance. The McKinsey Global Institute says the world cannot afford to ignore the more than 2.1 billion people who are either overweight or obese. That's nearly one third of every person on the planet. And if we keep going at the same rate, by 2030, almost half the world's adults will be classed as fat. That goes for Australia too. Each day, 280 Australians join the ranks of diabetics. Former newspaper editor and author Mike Smith is one of them. When I got a heart attack uh, seven years ago, that was my wake-up call. The Medical Journal of Australia reported in 2010 the total annual direct cost of overweight and obesity was $21 billion. On top of that, welfare payments combined with loss of productivity, early retirement, carer costs and premature death pushed indirect costs to $35.6 billion. $1 billion will be spent by the federal government over the next five years on supporting diabetics. Australian hospitals are supersizing beds and equipment, even widening doors to fit the ultra-obese. The special beds are $8,500 each. Severe obesity is not a matter of willpower or compliance. Obesity Australia's Professor John Dixon says we're genetically wired to hold on to weight, but increasingly our lifestyle choices around eating and activity levels are pushing us into obesity. It used to be a little bit of a freak to go to the gym, but nowadays it's, it's for everyone. There are fat profits in the obesity crisis in fitness. As our waistlines expand, it's become a growth industry, reaping $1 billion annually. Like an ever-increasing number of Australians, I need to shed a few kilos. But for those who find that exercise and diet aren't enough, bariatric surgery may be the cost-effective shortcut. Involving either a lap band or radical reduction of the actual stomach, bariatric surgery could ease financial pressures on the health system. We've got excellent data from the Swedish obese subject study that shows bariatric surgery achieves substantial sustained weight loss at 20 years afterwards. This is what we see in our trials. The McKinsey report says a range of 74 intervention levers should be engaged now to address global obesity. From public education to portion control, McKinsey says there's no single magic bullet. One of the positive aspects of government-led regulation is that it does create much more of a level playing field across different companies. So for example, a front of pack labelling scheme like we're going to see with star labels in Australia, it's much more equitable across different food industry companies if it comes from the government. I think uh, I used to be a hands-off person as far as government action goes. I said keep the government out of our pantry, but I'm changing my mind because these conditions are still rising ever so steeply. Mike Smith says it took around nine months to turn his life around, and gym industry veterans agree. You're kidding yourself if you think, well, I'm going to do this in three months or I'm just going to really give it a, you know, smash it. It's something that's got to become part of your lifestyle for the rest of your life. That means a lot of straining ahead.